This video explains how to calculate the weighted mean in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. As a first step for this tutorial, we need to create some example data. And we can do that as you can see in lines two and three of the code. So in line two of the code, I'm creating an example vector which contains certain values. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a vector called x1 is appearing. And in the next line, in line three of the code, I'm creating a vector containing weights. So if you run this line of code, you can see that at the top right, a new vector called w1 is appearing as well. It is important to note that both of these vectors contain eight values. So the length of both vectors is the same. Now, if you want to calculate the weighted mean based on these data, we can apply the weighted.mean function, as you can see in line five of the code. And within this function, we need to specify the name of our values. And we also need to specify the name of our vector containing the weights. And then in between, we need to specify a comma. So if you run line five of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that an output is returned. And this output is the weighted mean of our example data. So in this first example, I have explained how to use the weighted.mean function that is provided by the basic installation of the R programming language. However, it's also possible to use the matrix stats package for this task. And for this, we first need to install and load the package as you can see in lines seven and eight. I have installed the package already. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line eight of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the weighted mean function, as you can see in line 10 of the code, which is provided by the matrix stats package. And within this function, we need to specify the same as in the previous example. So the name of our vector x1 and the name of our weights w1. So if you run line 10 of the code, exactly the same output value is returned as in the first example. However, this time we have used the matrix stats package for this task. A difficulty that can occur when we are calculating the weighted mean is that our data contains NA values. And how to handle that is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 12 and 13 of the code. So in these lines of code, I'm creating some further example data. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that two new vector objects are appearing, which are called x2 and w2. And it is important to note that our vector object x2 contains an NA value, or in other words, a missing value. So if we would apply the weighted.mean function of the basic installation of the R programming language to these data, as you can see in line 15 of the code, an A would be returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And the reason for that is that our data contains an NA value. So if we want to remove those NA values when calculating the weighted mean, we can apply the weighted.mean function as you can see in line 17 of the code. And in this line of code, I'm specifying the na.remove argument to be equal to true. So if you run line 17 of the code, you can see that an output is returned, which is not NA. And the reason for that is that we have removed all the NA values from our data before calculating the weighted mean. So in the previous examples, I have explained how to calculate the weighted mean of an entire vector object. However, it's also possible to calculate the weighted mean by group. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 19 of the code. And for this example, I'm going to use the dplyr package. So in order to use the functions of the dplyr package, we first need to install and load the package. I have installed this package as well. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 20 of the code. And then we also need to create some further example data, as you can see in lines 22 and 20 three of the code. So if you run these lines of code, a new data frame object is appearing at the top right, which is called data. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 24 of the code. And then you can see that our data frame contains three columns. The first column contains our values. The second column contains our weights. And the third column is a group indicator, which divides our data into three different groups that are called A, B, and C. Now, if you want to calculate the weighted mean value for each of these groups, we can apply the code that you can see in lines 26 to 28. 
So in these lines of code, I'm using the group by function to group our data based on our grouping column. And then I'm using the summarize function in combination with a weighted.mean function to calculate the weighted mean for each group. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the bottom that another output is returned. This output is a tibble, and this tibble shows in each row the weighted mean for one of the groups. So for instance, the weighted mean for the group A is 6.5. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.